Hi, everybody. My name is Julie Sebi. I am the owner and author of the Analytics Corner blog, which you can find at the URL shown on the screen. Welcome to video number four in my series on learning Power Automate. The first video covered menus and navigating in Power Automate. The second introduced triggers and actions. The third provided a few things that you need to know for your first build, like the concept of dynamic content. And now this video is going to discuss how to troubleshoot flows in Power Automate. So the assumption here is that you started building your first flow, you have at least uh, one trigger and one action, and now it's test time. It's time to see if this will actually flow. I'm going to talk first about analyzing what, I'll, what I'm calling a current test, which means that we are going in and we are clicking test and we are testing right now, as opposed to analyzing a test that you did, say, yesterday or even last week. So I have a flow that I've put together that is triggered off of a email that should be received in my inbox. I am converting the HTML to text and using two different compose tools or compose actions in order to extract specific data out of these emails. And I'm filtering and then I'm, there's a number that I'm trying to get. So before I run the test, I just want to note that you have to save before you can test. Power Automate won't let you test without saving. And then once you save, uh, I, I don't think you can undo from there. So just take note of that. Now, when you click on test, if you have never run a test before, you've never triggered this flow, you will only be able to trigger it manually, which means that I'm going to have to actually send the email uh, and it needs to arrive in my inbox in order for this to run. But after you've done that, you can use a recently used trigger and it doesn't even have to be a successful test. As long as the email was sent and received, you can reuse these triggers. And that is a huge time saver. I worked in Power Automate for a, a while before I realized that I could make use of this. And so I just hit the test button and then I sent my email. I can hear it arriving in my inbox and my flow should be running. It's going to pop up here and here we go. We can see that my flow failed. Like I said, I set it up to fail. That was kind of the point. And what you see for every given test is the success or failure based on the green check or the red X. You'll also see how long the step took to execute. And so it took a second for it to recognize my email. And then I, I initially was a little concerned when I saw the zero because it should take some amount of time to execute, but apparently these steps are executing in milliseconds, so they show up as zero seconds. This can be a really useful indicator, though, of what's going on in your flow. If you have a step that normally takes, say, 10 seconds, and all of a sudden it's taking zero, that might be an indicator that you have a problem. I have a failed flow. It executed correctly until we got to the extract shrink. And if I click on it, I will be able to see an error message. And then on the right hand side, the error details panel pops up. Now, sometimes the information in error details is helpful and sometimes it's not, but it is your best starting point. And you'll see your error message here. But then further on down, sometimes if the error is something that's recognized, they'll give you a link to the Power Automate community, to an actual community post. So I'm a little bit surprised that I don't see a link to this error because it's really just an error in syntax. There's also a how to fix section, but I don't think I've ever come across an instance where this was helpful. Now, if your error details aren't helpful, the, the next thing that you can do in troubleshooting is to take a look at what's entering and exiting an action. So we're going to do that for each of my workflow steps. We're going to start with when a new email arrives and we'll work our way down through to the bottom. So I'm going to click on this to expand it. And in some cases, you can see all of the data coming in and going out from within this screen, but sometimes not. Sometimes you have to click on show raw inputs, click to download, or sometimes there will also be a show raw outputs. So I'm going to click on show raw inputs. And this is the information that we get about the email that is coming into my inbox. And there's not a whole lot here to, to work with. 
and this step was successful, so I'll just keep going on past this. Uh, we can see some information on whether attachments were included, what the subject of the email was, importance, and whether there are any attachments. If I click on outputs and click to download, it's going to take me to the JSON for the email. And if you're dealing with emails, a lot of times what you want to look for is the content here in the body, because this is going to be the bulk of the email. And my email, what it was, was a subject with the word shrink. And then I had three lines of information, a start date, an end date, and then a shrink value. That was my email. I'll just go ahead and pull it up here for you to see. And that's what it looked like. It was really simple. So that's the JSON. I'm going to close this and go back to the flow. Now I have an action where I'm converting the HTML to actual text. And so everything in the inputs that you can see here in the content, these are all HTML tags and essentially HTML and CSS that is formatting the email. And then this is what it looks like when it comes, comes out in just plain text. Now from there, I am using two compose tools and a filter tool. My first compose, essentially this is a text inbox with a carriage return. And I need this in order to write a formula to split the lines that are in my email. I'm not gonna go over this a whole lot, just point out that I can see what's going in, I can see what's coming out, and then I have the options to click on show raw inputs and see it in a slightly different way. Here I'm using a array filter. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. So what I did in this step was I wrote an expression that said, look at the length of each of the lines. If the line is line length is greater than zero, I want to keep it. If the line length is not greater than zero, I want to get rid of it which is essentially how I get rid of blank lines. What's interesting about this though, is that you can see here the data going in, which is as I expect it, but there's nothing coming out. And that's a bit curious because I failed here on this extract shrink, but if I don't send anything into extract shrink, well, that's a problem. If we click on edit and we go look at this step, what you'll see is that I have accidentally left the value blank and so I need to put zero in there to get that to work. So hopefully this is a good illustration of how you can track and trace what comes into and goes out of actions in order to find where you might have problems. The next thing that we're going to cover is troubleshooting with dynamic content. My last video explained the concept of dynamic content and how it can be used and this is a flow that is connecting to DocuSign and it's pulling documents or what are called envelopes out of DocuSign. And so when we, we built this flow and it was actually running really well, and we built it with a piece of dynamic content called the envelope ID, which you can see right there. And I'll just go ahead and click on it. And so we didn't have this, we had envelope ID, it was running. And then all of a sudden it stopped working. In troubleshooting what was wrong with this flow, we we needed to come explore the expression behind the dynamic content because all dynamic content has an underlying expression which you can see if you hover over it or i can click on it and do Control c and then i can copy and paste into something like notepad you can see i have already done that copy and paste in notepad and i've brought this this over here for some comparison so once I had this expression, the, the next thing that I needed to do was to explore what was going in and coming out of this particular action. Uh, I'm not going to run this flow because I don't, I don't actually have the credentials for the DocuSign account, so I can't run it, but I do have a screenshot. And so you'll see here that that envelope ID is referenced. And if I pull up the expression, this was the original. The slashes here, this is indicative of a hierarchy. But if we look at the body of what's coming across from DocuSign, envelope ID is on its own level. It's not part of a hierarchy. 
all of these other pieces where you see the down arrow, that means that I should be able to click on it and it would expand into a hierarchy. So something has changed here and th this really shouldn't happen. The dynamic, the dynamic content should always track directly to what's coming across in the action. For whatever reason, it's not in this case. But we were able to fix it by simply modifying the expression. We got rid of the dynamic content and wrote an expression where we just cut out this, which is what the modified expression is. So like I said, in theory, this shouldn't happen, but it did, so we fixed it by writing this expression. Okay, now the next thing I wanna talk about is troubleshooting looping actions. There are times when you are using a loop or an apply to each action, and after you run the flow, as I have done here, the action is gonna give you an option to move forward or backwards to see the details of each piece of information processed. What this flow is doing is I have a manual trigger and it's actually hooking into Microsoft Planner and I'm getting a list of tasks and then I'm trying to remove assignees from the tasks. There is a apply to each wrapped around the remove assignees because it does it one at a time. You're gonna see a next button or a previous button and you can move forward and backwards and see exactly what was processed for each one of the, in this case, tasks. Okay, so now we are done with analyzing current tests and I wanna talk about analyzing past tests. This is the flow that I started with, the one where I had the blank lines in the email that I was trying to get rid of. If you have, if you need to go back to previous test results, you'll wanna to come to this screen. And this is just the screen that you get to anytime you click on a flow from within my flows. And you'll see here a 28 day run history and you can click on the date timestamp and it'll actually take you to all of the details. It is also a summarized view showing you how long the flow took to run and whether it succeeded or failed. So if we wanna go back to the last test, we would click on that date time and then we get back to this screen where we can see everything that came into or out of the flow. So this is where my video is going to end today. This is the end of all of the troubleshooting that I had planned. There is some additional content in the blog about just things to remember on troubleshooting, but I don't need to read that to you in a video. You can go to the blog to see that content. So I hope you learned something today and stay tuned for more videos. Like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.